Welcome back to KJU 11's coverage of the Great American Eclipse. Yeah, right now it's 12.15. We're just about, what, maybe five minutes mm -hmm. away from the eclipse getting underway in the Houston area. Uh, one of our colleagues, Kim Castro, is live for us in Uvalde, which is in the path of totality. She joins us live from Uvalde now. Hey, Kim, what's it like out there? Guys, it is absolutely an honor to be here. I'm surrounded by folks that have this common goal, this common passion to witness something remarkable. I'm talking about solar eclipse chasers that have been doing this for decades. They've gone to Australia to chase the solar eclipse. They've gone to Venezuela to chase the solar eclipse. And they're here in Uvalde today for that same common purpose. Of course, there's a lot of panting around trying to see if these clouds are going to break but whether or not you've been planning to catch this celestial event for years or you're lucky like one of us that lives here and you just want to peek outside you got to stay really prepared and the only way to do this of course with your glasses but also whenever we see something majestic we want to try and capture it with our phones right well here's what you need to do you need to be wearing your glasses you also be need to have another pair of your eclipse glasses on your phone lens so that you don't warp the camera. The power of the sun is extraordinary. This is going to be one we're not going to want to miss regardless of if we just get a few peaks between the clouds because this one stands to be more tremendous than the one we had back in 2017. Take a look. Many of us remember the last one that happened in August 2017, and according to NASA, this year's will be even more exciting. The first and most obvious reason, a wider, more populated path. 2017's path of totality ranged from 62 to 71 miles wide, with about 12 million people inside the path. This time, the path is 108 to 122 miles wide and crosses right through the heart of our great state and even more densely populated areas. An estimated 31.6 million people live in the path this time. There will also be a longer time of totality, up to four minutes and 28 seconds versus two minutes, 42 seconds in 2017. In 2017, the sun was nearing solar minimum, a quieter time for our start. This year, the sun will be in or near solar maximum when the magnetic field is more active. So when the moment comes to see that breathtaking corona, viewers could see streamers and prominences, bright curls of loops coming off the sun. There's even a chance to see a coronal mass ejection like this one. Breathtaking is exactly what it stands to be. What is so special about a total solar eclipse versus what we saw last year is that because the moon completely covers the sun and we get to see the corona, we see the hottest part of the sun, 2 million degrees Fahrenheit. Compare that to the actual surface of the sun, which is only 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is going to be something phenomenal, astronomical, quite literally. And that is why everybody here has got their telescopes pointed up at the sky. We're sending a little prayer. We're really hoping that we see this cloud cover break. And we have got, of course, team coverage all across the state with my partner in crime, Cheetah Craft, that is there with specialists from Rice University that are hoping to capture these coronal mass ejections, all of the celestial wonders of the sun under these perfect conditions. Cheetah, what's going on with you? Oh, yes, we are, Kim. In fact, we are surrounded by over 300 people associated with Rice. So alumni, faculty, families, and we all have the same goal to get the sun out so we can see the solar eclipse. I'm also joined by Dr. Lika, who is a heliophysicist with NASA. And you know, you've been doing a lot of research, not so much here on the ground, but with these WB-57s out of NASA who are flying right now well above all the weather. Tell us about it. Yes, it's just to get past the weather because we don't know whether, whether what weather will do. So we have two WB-57 flying at 50,000 feet right now, going to Mazatlan and tracking back the eclipse. We are looking at the corona with different instruments, different wavelength, ultraviolet, mid-infrared uh, wave, things that we don't get to observe from the ground, along with the white light, which we will see if the cloud part. Now with uh, some of this imagery, is uh, tell me about this. What are you hoping to gain with, with some of the research and the data coming back? so much we still don't know. So you've heard about space weather. 
And the corona, the very beginning of the corona is the source region of space weather. And Eclipse allows you to image that and with image, it's like fingerprints. You're taking data, spectroscopic data, and you can pull out diagnostics. And it's so great that they're above the weather because yeah. here at the surface, we have gone back and forth with clouds, you know, those mid-level clouds. I'm gonna send it into the to the uh, meteorologist, Pat Cavlin. You tell us more about what you're looking at, but here we get some breaks. We're kicking up our fingers crossed. I think we still have some hope right here in Bandera, Bandera from the Fly Nail Ranch. Over yeah. to you, Pat. Fingers crossed for you, Cheetah, because right now in satellite Bandera is socked in with the cloud cover. And on the wider shot though, you can see going farther north, we do have some breaks out there. So there will be spots in Texas that get a good view. Here at home, not the case. We got a lot of clouds out there and now some downpours starting to pop up. Even a lightning strike out towards Columbus. Another one now just popping up. These thunderstorms are going to bear a lot of watching here as we go through the course of the afternoon because they're going to drift into an area that is conducive for strong to severe weather, including the potential for some very large hail. That's from Houston and points north. So anywhere north of Houston, really, you got to be on your guard today. Here's how Future Track pans out through the rest of the afternoon. Big storms firing up through uh, Conroe, getting into Huntsville, up towards Livingston. Could see them in Brenham as well through 4 and 5 o'clock this afternoon. Later this evening, all of this activity lifts into North Texas. We turn quiet here for the most part, maybe a couple showers up through Huntsville around midnight, and then maybe another round of storms as we get into tomorrow morning morning. But Chris, this is just round one. Round one of three as we go through the next few days. Walk us through the rest of it. Yes, we are tracking this low pressure system that is approaching from the west there. That's going to cause all of those showers and storms as we head into the next few hours, especially for Tuesday into Wednesday. Once this low moves over Texas, we are very well going to see most of those showers and storms that move in across uh, southeast Texas. And then once we get closer towards Wednesday afternoon, that those conditions will clear out. We'll see mostly sunny skies and we're going to be done with the weather pattern, at least for the end of the week. But one thing to note here is the severe weather threat that we are experiencing expecting at least in for the next uh, two days. So for Tuesday morning, we're going to start off quiet like Pat mentioned. And then once we get to the warmer parts of the day, and if we get some breaks in cloud cover that we usually are seeing right here, that's going to fuel those uh, strong thunderstorms and we very well could see a tornado threat. National Weather Service is definitely calling for uh, some increased severe weather threat for the next uh, couple of days, especially for our eastern areas. But if you head in the seven day forecast, expect those temps to continue being mostly warm overnight lows in the 60s rain chances lasting through Wednesday. We'll be right back.